Last week, our bus to overland vehicle conversion kept its focus on the front end of our Mirai. After working out our dashboard's final resting place, we then sorted out our steering wheel position and got a first glimpse of how our seating arrangement may look. This week an old niggle is back as once again work in the fiberglass department slows right down. On a positive note, we move towards completing our overhead storage bins and Markiplan Chris tackles the driver's side corner of our new roof profile. We get a rare visit from Mariah's namesake when Mariki comes home for a few days and we unpackage something that has been lying in storage for yonks. All this and so much more in episode 94 of A Dream Called Mirai. It is a new week, it is a new day, and this week spring arrives in the Southern Hemisphere. So all you Buddha can go and put on your G-strings and come flocking to the beach and your mankinis when your John Deere tractors parked there and looking cool. No, rather not, hey? But uh, this week uh, we're going to continue with uh, work on the front of the vehicle. Uh, Rocky's carrying on in the inside, so uh, without any further ado, let's see what is cutting. What is cutting are the corner brackets that Markiplier Chris is making to strengthen our driver's door frame. He still needs to complete the roof above the store, but first needs to make sure that the door frame is solid enough to support the door and the roof above. Something that we didn't think about was on that side the seat belt mounting. So probably going to have to open up that pillar uh, to to mount the seat belt to make sure that it's strong enough to pass any tests and scrutiny that we are going to be coming across and hopefully in the very near future. We are okay on this side because we haven't closed up this pillar yet. I have learned that these guys chop and cut steel the same way that I plough through a good stake. Chris soon has the corners of the driver's door reinforced and now he can start to focus on completing the roof over the driver's cab. Righty then, time for some feedback regarding my cry for help last week. I want to thank those of you who got back to me regarding our main entrance door. Um, it seems the route we are going to go uh, is Brom will make us one. We are going to make our own kick-ass door. And thanks for the advice uh, from those of you who shared your doors with us. Much appreciated. For the most, things are moving along in the right direction, albeit slowly, for the most part. However, my weekly inserts would not be weekly inserts if I didn't have my usual gripe about the fiberglass department, which has just boom, slowed down again. And uh, it is incredibly frustrating. Um, yeah, luckily we have got a lot of stuff to do. And if we do need other guys to climb in and do this, we will do it. That is not to say that nothing happened. Just very little in the time that has passed. After some two weeks, all that is new on the table is one thin fiberglass strip. This yellow thing you see behind me is an edging. So the, the wood is the mold. The fiberglass around it is almost like an edging, like a, a U-shaped thing like that, which is going to clip over here uh, to round this off when it's on the side of the vehicle. Resin man needs to make three of these things and time is against him. Time is against him because hopefully in a few weeks time this special person and I will be starting a new chapter in our lives with Mirai. Visitor from Cape Town. So it's a carp in our. Ik die carp in. <laughs> Truth is that deep down inside, Mariki will always be a girl from the Free State who moved to Kaoteng, then to KZN, and is now working in Cape Town. Do you now see why we need a Mirai? So now my love, the next time that you see this vehicle, it's she's probably going to be done, you know? <laughs> and it all started with that. I mean, can you believe it? No. It's like really probably... Ram says end of September, and uh, we're not sure when you'll get here, but the chances are the next time you see it, she's built. But maybe she gets to me. Maybe I don't get to her, she gets to she me. She comes down to Cape Town. Cape Town. Mm. I must say, I can see very good progress. I've been away for, what, seven weeks, mm. and it's the most progress I've seen 
in like that in a in a stretch of time. For me, being around Marai daily does impact my perception of our progress, which is slow but steady. Inside Marai, Rocky has started the final phase of our overhead storage construction. What Rocky is busy doing is taking all our overhead locker doors off and they are going to go to the paint shop today. Um, we're going to put a little bit of a blue coating on them but then sand it down so that we get the grain coming through the blue. And hopefully it gives us a really lacquer effect. Then these doors will be done. I was hoping we could start the painting immediately. The doors are ready and waiting. Our whiskey blue paint is ready and waiting. However, there is traffic at East Coast Scratch and Dent's paint department. The paint shop is pretty busy at the moment and uh, so we're waiting for all the vehicles that need paint work done to get out of there so we can start to paint our overhead locker doors, uh, the TV box, yeah, our final paint session. It's not as though we have nothing to do while we wait, but I was not prepared for the sight that greeted me the next morning. I got a bit of a fright when I came to East Coast Scratch and Dent this morning and I saw our roof has been taken off again. Um, uh, so I thought, what is going on? So I must go and just check with uh, Marco Plant Chris to see what is cooking. I called Brahma and said, maybe that's where our problem is. Yeah. All right, but I had to take this off because I need to cap this now because we're going to finish this off now. Okay. For Chris to make sure that everything is as close to perfect as possible, he had to remove the roofing material. What he has now is a solid roof structure that it seems he is now happy with. However, he does still have a small niggle. Something else that's worrying Chris is these little side windows. This one, if you look at it from the side, is straight. The one on the other side almost seems to have a little bit of a warp. I suppose that's the best way to describe it. And one just hopes that if we put glass in, it will be able to fit the contours. I think we'll be able to get away with it. But we're only going to know once the glass is cut. Fortunately, we do have a bit of space to play with on these side windows, so it should be okay. Next, Chris sets about strengthening the arch that runs across the top of the front of the vehicle. He's putting in uh, extra, uh, almost a slab of steel all the way across just for extra reinforcing to make sure that that whole front section is like really strong, very solid, no movement. I still have to pinch myself every now and again when I look at what's happening before our eyes. Our dream is really taking shape. It is hard to keep my heart rate down when I think of what lies ahead. I cannot wait. Seeing Rocky installing the corner panels of our bedroom makes it so easy for me to imagine what this will look like once completed. The image I have is spectacular. Our removable cupboard panels are in place and the interior is looking good. Meanwhile, our man Chris is still at it up front. Before the roof can be put back, the all-important rust proofing needs to happen. Now Chris can really finalize this part of the build. He has spent a couple of weeks redesigning and constructing this section of the vehicle. All his work is safety critical, so there are no shortcuts. I was away for a couple of hours, and when I returned, Mirai's roof was in place. Both corners are completed. Chris has done an amazing job. Markiplant, Chris and Brahm do not want the roof to look good. It must be perfect. If you look closely, you can see small dents and waves. Not cool. This calls for some flat bar. Why did you put that flat bar in? It's a big roof and it's going to walk. Okay. And if you press there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go down. Okay. These supports will run across these ribs and level everything out. Chris really does have his foot on the gas and soon our roof is well and truly solid. I turn my back for five minutes and the roof is off again. This time, Chris is giving it the final touch up before it will be handed to East Coast Scratch and Den's panel beating guru to make perfect. But more about that next week as finally the paint shop is available and the overhead storage doors have received their first coat of whiskey blue paint. Now the elbow grease stage of things begins. Engine Pete has traded diesel for a sanding machine and sets about working the doors to pull the wood grain through.
So that is the look we are going for, and um, I'm very happy with it. Uh, what we have seen now, it's it's somebody has sanded against the grain on some of the doors. So we just got to see if we need to sand it down, or do we need to make more doors? Brahm also climbs in on the process. As I expected, he was not happy with the scratches, nor with the run of the grain on some of the doors. He is right as usual. We've decided to change a couple of the overhead doors because the grain was going the wrong direction, so Rocky's busy sorting that out. And then uh, uh, Chris's mini-me, uh, Nikki there, started to vacuum the inside of the vehicle so everything can get like a clean, so we can start to close things up. Rocky gets straight to it, and it does not take him long to make the doors with the grain behaving this time. The new doors are painted and sanded. I am loving what I see emerge from beneath the whiskey blue paint. All this will be finished off with a clear matte finish. Something that is far from finished is Mirai's nose. However, we do have some movement in that department. I walked into the workshop and the Ikes are very excited to show me this plastic bumper which Brahm had lying around. So, it looks like we're going to probably end up using this in the front of Mirai. I think it's from an old Toyota or something like that, but it needs to be cut in the middle, made a bit wider, but it'll give a good foundation for uh, the rest of what we're looking at. Of course, we may also decide not to use this at all if it does not fit with the overall look I have in mind, but it does give the guy something to work with or to work from. It is not often I talk about the guys at East Coast Scratch and Dent Sense of Humor because they are really all funny guys particularly when they send me photos with a message that they think my side panelling should be something like this. Buyer snarks, Owens. I am hoping that I do not have a sense of humour failure when we open up this baby, a 4.5 metre long awning that will run from the front to the rear of Mirai. Since it arrived, I have not even had a peek at this beast until today. That awning has been in that tube for I don't know how long, just lying there, doing nothing. So it's time to find out what we actually have got. Unpackaging this is a multi-man task. Soon I get to see that all is not as it should be with our awning. I'm a bit worried the end here is a bit flat, like something was put on top of it that has uh, squashed it. So hopefully the mechanism is okay. However, never fear when the Red Baron, aka Brom, is near. True to form, in no time at all, the guys are busy repairing the bent awning housing. What's going on there is good old fashioned panel beating. This awning is massive and suddenly I'm a bit scared of the damn thing. So a few things. Um, <laughs> number one, deploying this awning is going to be an athletic feat. Um, I see that now, and uh, yeah, how to get up top there to unclip all those little things and roll it out. Hmm. Chris and his mini-me Nikki take over the panel beating, and soon the bent housing is starting to look like it should. The relief is huge, and once again I am so thankful to this amazing team that is busy building Mariki and my dream. We're going to end this week with the guys working on our awning. Uh, hopefully next time everything is all sorted, and I'm sure it will be. Um, yeah, a busy week, a busy week, a good week, uh, except for the fiberglass. Uh, so I'm very happy with our progress. Uh, things are moving along very nicely. Uh, yeah, just this week, man. The goings on in the press. What some people say and what some people find acceptable. Chanting of slogans. It just got me thinking, I wonder what would happen if we all suddenly started chanting uh, kill the rhino or kill the vulture. It's just not cool, is it? In fact, it's despicable. Anyway, that's it from me for now. And uh, you must please all look after yourselves and you must keep safe. Remember to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You will find us under A Dream Called Mirai. Until next time, keep your dreams alive.